Okay. Good afternoon, my name is Ross Muir. I'm actor producer of Con Artists Theatre Company who are producing The Haunting by Hugh Janes for an autumn tour. And I'm delighted to say I have Hugh Janes with me this afternoon to answer a few questions. Hello, Hugh. Hello, Ross. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Okay, I'm going to get straight to it. So, what excited you about writing this play? I loved the idea of the, the well, no, let, sorry, let me go back. Um, the there hadn't been a play, a ghost play written for the whole length of the time that the woman in black was on. And it came up to, I think it's 21st anniversary. And I thought, hmm, it's a rather long gap between ghost plays. And I looked around for various um, writers like M.R. James and Lovecraft and people like that. And then came across these short stories by Charles Dickens, which mostly had appeared in sort of periodicals um, or in uh, with little with short stories within the novels, like the Pickwickians might have been sitting around at a table telling a telling a story which would have been a ghost story. So the, the stories weren't um, of themselves able to be dramatized. They weren't quite strong enough. They weren't like Christmas Carol, for instance. But I had a, a story about my uh, cousin who had been an antiquarian book dealer in Brighton way, way back. And when I was a boy of about 10, he and I went to the cinema. And when we were walking home back to my aunt's house, um, he told me the story of how he'd been to value a collection of books at an old house from a couple who died. And while he was uncovering various elements of the books, he found um, things written in the fly leaves or um, bits of paper that were stuck inside the books. And they all related to the deceased and the, particularly to the deceased uh, female of the family. And he started to get the feeling of this presence that was there. And as the more he unveiled and the more he um, catalogued the books, the more her presence was felt until one day he actually saw her and he started a conversation, not realizing he was talking to the deceased because obviously he'd never met her. And he had started to have a conversation and realized he was talking to a ghost. And I always remember that story. It you know, it, it filled my little 10 year old mind and I thought, oh, I wonder if any day I can use that. And that is that became the basis for The Haunting. Oh, wonderful. That's really fascinating. And um, I was interested to find out that you started your career as an actor before moving mm -hmm. more into writing on a full time basis. And so I wondered, as an actor, which of the two parts in the play would you like to have played? <laughs> Oh, I think I think David, I think because David effectively is my cousin. So that's I think that would be the one because it was obviously the link with the family would be there. Oh, it's a lovely it's a lovely role, which I'm enjoying um, exploring myself at the moment. Um, Good, I'm looking forward to seeing and... you do it. <laughs> so I suppose my next question um, is sort of. Um, after answering the first one, is do you personally believe in ghosts? I'm I am very open minded about it. I think after the stories that I've heard, and I I um, somebody told me an extraordinary story yesterday um, when I was telling them about the play. It was in rehearsals, and this was about a a, 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 a military family who were moved out um, to Poland. And um, this was only four years ago. And they were based in um, on an old premises which had been used um, as part of the uh, as, as part of the extermination regime. Nobody um, or very few people knew the, the military. The, the father knew, but he had two small children and one of the children would would cry every single night when he was put to bed. Quite a big, very modernized um, place they were in, but he would, this little boy would cry every night. So eventually they moved him into another bedroom. Everything stopped. And several weeks later, the father said to his son, he said, you know, I'm, I'm pleased that you're sleeping better, but what was the reason? Um, and he said, I didn't like the children visiting me in pajamas at night. Oh. This was, this was a six-year-old, seven-year-old child would have had no knowledge of any of the things that have gone on so yes I'm very open-minded about ghosts and things 
Um, Gosh. And that's why, and I like going to see ghost plays and, you know, it's, it's, mm. I think. Oh, yeah, me uh, too. <laughs> enjoyable, yeah. Um, and funnily enough, our last play was um, J.M. Barry's ghost play, Mary Rose. Um, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Which was a lovely nice. um, one to revive. Yeah. Um, okay, here's one for you. So why do younger audiences enjoy this play? Oh, I think probably, that's very interesting. I, well, they've obviously grown up with um, a, a really horrific horror films which are go from the extremely gory to the um, extremely intricate in the way that they're plotted, things like Saw and the, the, the It franchise and all of these different films. So uh, Stephen King, many others who, who write terrific um, books with these um, extraordinary endings. Um, and he, I think that they've, they've come to like them so much that it's that, that when they, when you get to, actually confronting Dickens and the Dickensian world and how those, his stories um, uh, evolve from his own experiences, uh, because he obviously believed very much in spiritualism and went to see mediums um, a great deal, um, particularly because he had a, uh, a young niece who was also called Mary, it's the name of the ghost in the play, um, who died when she was 17 from unexpected they they don't know why she just died after visiting the one night after visiting the theater and she was living with um the, with charles and his wife at the time and he he always wanted to try and contact her to find out what on earth had happened so that was one of the reasons for him visiting mediums and i think that young people have um are very much attuned to the ways of of the spirit world through through films and that when you come up to the the practical being in the theatre in a space where you're sharing those experiences, um, that's one of the attractions, of, I think. Anyway, not being such a young person anymore, I can't quite speak for them, but I, I know that they seem to enjoy it and go quite a lot. So that's the key thing. Yeah. Oh, no, that's really interesting. And I seem to remember from the last play that we worked on, which was about Dickens and uh, Lewis Carroll having this fictitious encounter, when Dickens yes. talks about that um, incident with his half sister, was it Mary? Was it? Yes. Yeah, and and, and he yeah. wore her ring for the rest of his life on his yeah. finger. Um, so there's almost like that spiritual connection in an object, isn't there? Yes. Yes. There's still, sort of you're still with them, or they're still with you. Um, um, well, I think finally... in the, in, uh, it, it, oh, sorry. No, in the Roy Grace books, I think it's um, this a detective. I think it's by. Peter James, I think, is the is the writer there. Um, he's a, a, a Brighton policeman, and he his wife had gone missing, and he never knew why. And he would consult a medium and take objects down. And I think he still uses the medium in when he's investigating the the murders and thrillers. Um, so he he will often go down and say, you know, what feelings do you get about this? So yeah. <laughs> I think even in modern, even in modern um, thriller detective writers, you're getting this element of the spiritual creeping in. Yes, yes. And the other interesting thing in Worthing, which is where we're based as a theatre company associated with Connaught, is that yes. uh, we've got the Spiritualist Church just down the road, which was founded by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we'll be getting a, a group of them along to one of the performances. Yeah. Oh, I um, hope so. <laughs> and finally, I just wanted to ask you if you had any thoughts that you'd like to share with con artists before presenting this play. Um, well, I just hope you give the audiences great thrills and great enjoyment in um, as the as the mystery unfolds. So, and I hope you enjoy it, and that the audiences get the same kind of pleasure out of it. So, I'm, and I'm sure they will. They have they have in the past. So, I I'm sure they will now. Lovely. And very good luck with it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hugh. It's been lovely speaking to you this afternoon. And uh, hopefully see you again soon. You will. All right, Ross. Bye-bye okay. now. All right. Stop. <laughs>